beep, beep, beep. Welcome to the Court of the EDI Jester. I hope you're all well on this sunny but somewhat chilly day. Boom. So, thank you for watching as usual. Uh, if you'd like to support me, you can become a Jester, right? Or you can join the Warrior Teacher Programme and come and become part of the team. Fantastic stuff going on. I've come across a brilliant thread, so I thought I would share this rather excellent thread with you. Um, and the link for the thread itself is in the Dubris, as usual. And it was by a gentleman called Bob Hampstead, or at Burke underscore Hampstead. I'm assuming it's a bloke. You know, you can never tell on the old Twitters, can you? X. The myth of the trans community. This is terribly good. The myth of the trans community. The trans community is not a coherent community at all. It is an inexplicably broad demographic containing both vulnerable and dangerous people. Here's my attempt to classify the various groups. A thread. Thank you, Bob. Good stuff. We then begin. Number one, trans children, an entirely coerced, Mythical group of under 18s, these children cannot possibly understand nor consent to this and shouldn't be affirmed. Tales of two year old trans children are absurd and dangerous. This is profound child abuse and must end immediately. What Bob's also done within his tweet there is posted examples of what he's talking about for your records. So do bookmark and follow Bob's work. The particular one that comes under that about the trans child is from Stonewall, with Stonewall saying research suggests that children as young as two recognise their trans identity. Jail. Not enough, is it? Jail. Yet many nurseries and schools teach a binary understanding of pre-assigned gender. Oh, for the love of God. Stonewall. The enemy, by the way. Look at the Inclusive and Affirming education is crucial for the, for the for the well-being of all young people. It is exactly the opposite. It is a massive, massive safeguarding red flag. Any child, any child up to 18, you know, massive red flag. Schools need to be dealing with this as they would do with any other, any other form of abuse, which is what it is. Child abuse. Next, he's got as a category, this is interesting, straight, trans, ID, girls. A demographic of teenage girls terrified by modern culture's toxic projection of womanhood. Hadley Freeman, at Hadley Freeman, has written compassionately about this cohort many times. So there's the work of Hadley Freeman there on this subject. Well worth getting dug into. And again, Bob supplies links to help you with that. And then young lesbians identifying as trans, teenage girls dealing with relentless homophobia and misogyny, mistaken in their belief that they can transition into heterosexuality. This is a very sad logic. This is the transing the gay away in one, one, one spoke of that particularly nasty wheel. So, for example, in, in the picture that he's given, Bob has given us the resource there. It says young lesbians considered at the bottom of the heap suddenly found they were really popular when they said they were trans. Another female clinician said, we heard a lot of homophobia, which we felt nobody was challenging. A lot of the girls would come in and say, I'm not a lesbian. I fell in love with my best girlfriend, but then I went online and realised I'm not a lesbian. I'm a boy. Phew. OK, so that's number four of Bob's thread. Number five, here's Dr Elizabeth Van Horn, a psychi consultant psychiatrist at the now closed kids, admitting she's no idea where this huge demographic of young girls came from. A total dereliction of duty, he's saying. With a video there for you to have a look at as well. Number five, gay, man who, gay men who are now trans. <clears throat> Activists insist that they're now straight women. These men are at risk of medical interventions and profoundly harm their fertility and sexual function, not to mention their chances of finding a partner. So that's number six of 18. Next one that Bob's got for us is lesbians who identify as trans men, women who have somehow concluded that they're simply too butch to be women. These women are equally at risk of medical interventions that would harm their fertility and sexual function and can cause early menopause. So he's, what he's breaking down here is the ridiculous concept of trans to begin with. That's number seven of 18 from Bob's thread. We move on to the far more dangerous players in the community, and here Bob begins to break down the darker side of this. The cross-dresser is the first one to get it in section nine. 
Typically, typically a straight male, often married with children, doing it for purely sexual gratification. Those seeking to act out in public in stealth, like Jennifer here, and then there's a video for you, are a danger to women and girls. These men relish invading women's spaces. We know about this. This is the cross-dressers, the philolloping gusset fumblers. And then you've got the male lesbian Bob turns to next in number 10. The, the male lesbian, a straight, homophobic, predatory male who believes his trans status makes it acceptable to home les lesbians for sex. Remember the cotton ceiling, folks? The cotton ceiling. If you don't remember it, look it up. It's one of their one of their absolute affirmations is to be able to have sex with a lesbian. The female gay man, a straight homophobic woman who fantasizes about sleeping with gay men. Acts, activists can often be seen celebrating these women. This is the LARPing women invading gay spaces and gay clubs and pretending that they're gay men. You'll see them on some of the apps that gay men use, and they're on there going, you know, he, him, five foot one, big hips, small hands. You know, it's just, it's, the, it's nonsense, absolute nonsense. And then Bob gives us uh, this profoundly homophobic notion of sex by deception in gay saunas is endorsed and promoted by the likes of groups like Clinic Q or Clinic Q at Clinic Q and people like Stephen Whittle. You know, she's always doing it. And then you have the child catcher, the straight cross dresser who seeks to encourage other people's children to transition via treatment now outlawed by the cash review. These people are a clear danger to children. What motivates these men to do this? Good question, Bob. A variant of this is the absurd trans woman who solely blames puberty for his bizarre experience, appearance. This is then used to justify stunting the growth of children using puberty blockers. What exactly is he imagining here? And then they've got a picture, which you can see when you're, if you're following along on the tweets. And then the opportunity, opportunistic predatory criminal. These people will exploit self-ID loopholes promoted by Stonewall UK and Scottish trans in order to terrorise women. These or, those organisations will insist that even male rapists are women because self-ID is sacrosanct in their ideology. And this is where we've seen the likes of Isla Bryson and some of these more ridiculous men uh, bothering women in prison and causing the most terrible trouble. It's a terrible thing to think these women are in prison with these men. Absolutely terrible. I can't believe it's going on. Then Bob calls upon the non-binary, the most middle-class, meaningless gender identity. Typically, this means a woman with short hair. To imply that these people are oppressed is absurd and offensive. This is the epitome of luxury beliefs. Predictably, The Guardian made a video about them. And again, Bob has kindly supplied us with the video for that very thing. I struggle to comprehend how LGBTQ+, look up at Q+, charities, can possibly came to represent the interests of such an utterly incoherent group. Trans rights are human rights is a very vacuous slogan that shields some truly toxic groups. The cohorts in posts two to seven contain men, women and children who have clearly been harmed by an ideology's malign influence on our institutions. It's imperative that these people receive comp compassionate support from groups outside of the reckless trans movement. Thankfully, these groups do exist. And then Bob names a few. Alliance LGB, Transgender Trend, Safe Schools UK, Sex Matters, uh, SexMatters.org, Men's Network One, uh, which is the Gay Men's Network, WRN Scotland, Thoughtful Therapist, GenSpec, Family Educa Education Trust, Bayswater, I'll add on to that, um, Our Duty, and Pitt Parents. Uh, and he expresses this very clearly, so we can see who exactly it is that we're dealing with. And it's not a pretty picture by any means. But I hope you found that interesting. Please do go and visit Bob's Twitter and follow him if you can, and bookmark this particularly useful breakdown of the trans lunacy and I think it's very important now and I'm going to keep saying this uh, gay people and lesbian people have nothing to do with LGBT it's just a cult I'll see you later bye bye